Okay, we're continuing module one, lesson 11, exercise number two. And we were looking to change six and a fourth to a decimal. So the whole number is six, and then one fourth is the same as 0.25. As we can see when we do one divided by four in the calculator, test it out, make sure you're seeing the same thing, 0.25. So 6.25 is the y divided by the x, 3.75. So 6.25 divided by 3.75 equals, and in my calculator, I get 1.6 repeating on forever. So I'm still having the same constant. On the next one, I see a problem. 6 and 2 thirds. And why is that a problem? Because as a fraction, or as a decimal, 2 divided by 3 in your calculator, go ahead and do it, you will see 0.6 repeating on forever. So we can't actually do this one using decimals. We have to use the fractions, and that is why we have to learn how to do these fractions. So 6 and 2 thirds divided by um, 4. So 6 and 2 thirds, we can actually at least save a little space. We can change that. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 2 is 20 over 3. So we're going to do 20 over 3 divided by 4. 20 over 3 divided by Four. Keep change flip. Twenty over three times one over four is twenty over twelve. So twelve will go into twenty one time and then. 20 minus 12 is 8 left over over 12, and that will simplify. 2 will go into 8. Nope, let's do a bigger one. 4 will go into 8 2 times, and 4 will go into 12 3 times. So it is 1 and 1 third. Sorry, 2 thirds, which was our constant. Okay, the next one. 2 divided by 1.2, and it already gives it to us as a decimal, so we don't have to do any changes there. So in our calculator, 2 divided by 1.2, and we get that same constant, 1.6, repeating on forever. And finally, 3 divided by 1.8, 3 divided by 1.8, which is equal to 1.6, repeating on forever. So is it proportional? Yes, there is a constant y divided by x, which is equal to 1 and 2 thirds. We'll keep that short since we have all of that work up there shown. Describe in words what the unit rate means in the context of the problem. So the fact that we use the blue and the red at the top is what's going to be helpful with us there. So blue at the top, red at the bottom. Blue was 5 thirds. Red became 1 when we did that division. So for 5 thirds, so let's change that to a uh, mixed number. 3 will go into 5 one time with 2 left over, 2 thirds. So 1 and 2 thirds, and we're doing quarts. I'm looking back at my table to see. Quarts of blue paint for every, and we have it at the bottom, one red. One quart of red. Okay. Hey. 
Lesson summary, a number written in fraction form whose no numerator or denominator is itself a fraction called a complex fraction. If a proportional relationship is given by a description at, such as a person walks two and a f half miles and one and a fourth hours, a constant speed, then the unit rate is and so they were getting the denominator as one. They changed two and a half to five over two. They changed one and one fourth to five fourths. And then they multiplied by the reciprocal. When you multiply the denominator by the reciprocal, you get one. And then you were multiplied in the numerator. That's the only work that they showed here. This is just the numerator. work because the denominator is still 1. So 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 tenths is, or 20 tenths is equal to 2 when you simplify. Give an example when you might use a complex fraction. So you could use it, as we said, in our outcomes. We did um, a recipe we looked at a recipe for one of our examples, um, exercise one. We looked at speed of the two people in exercise in our example one. Um, and in example two, okay, we will look at area and lengths as well. How is the unit rate calculated by making the denominator 1. So in other words, you're just dividing your fractions. Can we calculate unit rates when both values in the ratio are fractions? And that is yes, by dividing your fractions. How is the unit rate useful? We want to be able to figure out how much it is for just one. So like on that very first example that we did, Rather than having to set up these two giant tables and see that they went the same speed at 75 minutes, which if you didn't actually look at 75 minutes, you would never see that they had that same speed. But if we find the unit rate, how much for one, for one mile or for one minute, then in that case, it was three over 20, um, you would be able to see that they are going the same speed. Okay, so it's an easier way to look at two different ratios and be able to compare them. It, it helps us to be able to compare our ratios. Okay, we have a little bit of time left in this video, so um, this is not going to be homework for Monday. We do want to do these. Determine the quotient on number one, number two. So determine the quotient. So let's change to improper fractions. Two times seven is 14. Plus four is 18. Over seven divided by one times six is six plus three is nine over six. Keep, change, flip. 18 over 7, multiply by the reciprocal. We don't divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. 18 times 6. 18 times 6 gives me 108. 7 times 9 gives me 63. And we could simplify that. Both can be divided by 9. And I know that because 8 plus 1 is 9, and that's divisible by 9. These are divisibility rules that are fantastic to know. So 108 divided by 9 is 12. 63 divided by 9 is 7, so 12 sevenths. Okay. 
one lap around a dirt track is a third, one mile, one third of a mile. It takes Bryce an hour to ride one lap. What is his unit rate in miles around the track? So miles. Per hour, keep, change, flip, nine times one is nine, three times one is three, equals three, but three is what? Well, what was first? Miles. What did we make our denominator to be one? Is hours. So three is the number of miles. The second thing is for one hour, so per hour. Okay. And that is it for today.